trigger a global uh, disaster. So your uh, theory or contention, I don't know how far you want to go with it, but is that uh, when this uh, potential default uh, occurs, or if it, it could occur, even partially, that, that, in the past. that it, back in the day, you know, people looked at, at gold, and uh, I mean, people still look at oh, gold, yeah. but now, rather than something physical you could touch and feel, right. they would look to crypto right. as a safe haven. People for the last 10 years have been looking to, to, to treasuries as, as a one safe place. What if they no longer become safe? I think crypto is going to be the thing. And you and I talk about this all the time. How are we going to get mom, how are we going to get grandmother to uh, grand, granddad to download a wallet and use crypto? The best way to uh, fuel adoption is necessity. I think people are going to learn real fast. The fact is that this asset is out there. And right now people are like, well, that's a little weird. It's not really for me. But what happens when things get crazy? Uh, what a divergent and interesting thing. No wonder you were so popular here at the North American Bitcoin Conference. Well, I'm fascinated about it because historians don't talk about it and most people don't know anything about it. You know, it's a funny thing happened after 1933. We had, you know, this great depression with more... That's about the time your organization was founded, it, right? It was founded to, a, to, a, to, to educate people about economics because it was just such an egregious confiscation of American wealth. Then we had the big war and everybody kind of experienced this historical amnesia, so people don't talk about it anymore. But it was a, it was a catastrophic event. And I don't think we've learned anything since then. You know, look what they did in 2008. I mean, the Federal Reserve just bought up all the bad, bad assets at, at the bad, bad prices and pretended as if the system was solvent. Everything is worse now than it was then, and far worse. Yeah. And we don't have the liberality uh, in the central banking system that we had in 2008. So I don't know what's going to happen at the next crisis. And th it's coming. It, it is coming. You know, uh, we... Uh, and so that's one another reason that I am very inclined to not sell any of my crypto assets. It's been a terrible investment. My average buy of cryptos uh, for Bitcoin is probably like 7,000. And yes, I'm bleeding. Yes, I'm negative. But I do see the value of cryptocurrencies and that's why I'm able to hold and I will continue to buy at low prices just to hedge myself because I do have so many other assets that are tied to the stock market and the US government. So for me, I understand that people think it's a Ponzi scheme, a waste of money, but at the same time, all these other assets, um, they have their own financial Ponzi scheme and it really does take a higher level of understanding of how debt works, how the financial system works and why crypto being its own self-regulating entity uh, might end up being the superior store of value just due to the fact that it can't, you can't just keep creating it and there's no uh, federal reserve for Bitcoin. But um, that's one of the main reasons I'm going to hold and let me know your thoughts and comments on this and let me know uh, if you plan on in the comments below if you plan on selling your crypto or joining me in holding until we hit 20,000. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, guys.